Hey guys, CB Super. If you're on the free version of DaVinci Resolve 17, you probably noticed that there are no sharpening tools for you inside of the edit page. You have to go over to the Fusion page and there's really only one tool, it's the Unsharpen Mask. Today I'm gonna to show you the CB Sharpen Effect. It's a new tool that I made that you can use from the edit page to bring a unsharpened mask over to your footage without having to go into the Fusion page. If you're looking to pick it up, you can head on over to cbsuper.com. Come on over either to products or you can click on this sharpen tab right here. That'll take you to the products page. Here you can see sharpen and the noise removal tool, both $5 each, or you can get it over on my buy me a coffee page forward slash cbsuper. Again, you can find it right here, cbsuper noise removal and the sharpen effect are both $5. Once you purchase it, it'll, it'll give you a link and the link will include a dot settings download file. Once you have that dot setting file, you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve and show you how to install it now. Now, one thing to take into consideration is that this Fusion effect, which is usable from the edit page, only works in DaVinci Resolve 17 and newer. It won't work in DaVinci Resolve 16 because Fusion effects didn't exist back then. If you're not familiar with what Fusion effects are, if you come over here to your effects library and you come down to toolbox effects, you'll see all of these Fusion effects, which allows you to use things that used to only be accessible over in the Fusion page, you can now use them in the edit page. And that's what we're gonna be utilizing today. But in order to install it, we actually have to jump over to the Fusion page and come over to where it says edit templates over here on the left. If you don't see this, it's just effects library, twirl down, edit templates, come down to effects. You have three little dots up here. You wanna left click and then hit show folder. You're gonna go ahead and drop that in here. You don't have to restart or save anything. All you gotta do is drop it in here and hit the X. Just go ahead and jump back over to the edit page and here it is. It'll be under effects, CB sharpen. Just grab it and drop it on whatever footage you wanna sharpen. Right out of the box, it pretty much has a sharpening effect already applied to it. I set it up so that it's a pretty mild sharpening. And the nice thing is if you come over here to where the inspector is and you hit effects, come down to where it says blend, you can actually blend this down. If it's too much, go ahead and blend it down. But the way that I have it set up right now for most footage, you should be able to just drop it and it's ready to go as it is. This right here, we'll notice that there's a lot of grain in this footage. So this is kind of like the extreme version of, I wanna just show you how to use the tool. And if we can get this looking good, then we can pretty much get almost any footage looking good good from the edit page. All right, so we have a few sliders over here, but before we even talk about those, you have to understand how to cache these effects because by default, DaVinci Resolve does not cache fusion effects or open effects unless you manually tell it to do so. And to do that, all you gotta do is right click on the clip that you wanna cache, come up to render cache fusion effects filter and hit CV sharpen, left click on that. And you should see a little red or blue bar popping up. This is letting you know that it's caching it so that it will be able to play in real time. Once you make any changes in the inspector, again, it's gonna have to re cache. So if I change the threshold, you'll notice over here in the left hand side, it turns back to red and then it'll cache back to blue. And once it's fully cached back to blue, it'll play in real time. Now you may not even have to cache it depending on your computer, but like all of DaVinci Resolve, it's very hardware dependent. And sometimes this effect can run a little bit heavier depending on how much sharpening you're using. All right, so let's go ahead and get in here real close and we'll take a look at what the sharpening tool is actually doing and how to use it. And if we look over here to the right, we have a very familiar site. If you're used to using the unsharpened mask in the fusion page this is essentially the exact same the only difference is i added in the this blend here and that is so you can control it you have a little bit more granular control over how much of the effect you're actually applying so the size actually controls the size of the mask so if i just turn the settings up all the way we'll see that it's affecting even the grain in the background it's affecting the grain here in the foreground it's, it is detecting this image, which you can see because this is where the majority of that edge mask is. And obviously this is blown way out of proportion. This is not how much we would wanna use it. You always wanna use this tool and pretty much most of the tools inside of DaVinci, you wanna use them in moderation. So now that we've turned everything up all the way, you can really see what this tool is doing. Now it's affecting each one of these color channels differently. And if I was to remove one of these color channels, you'll notice that it removes it from the background there. It is no longer affecting anything in the red channel. If I remove the green channel, it is no longer affecting anything in the green channel. So sometimes this can be very useful if you're trying to detect an edge that is only in a certain color channel. 99% of the time, you're probably gonna leave these all three checked. And that's because you're just trying to detect the edge that is in the composite of the red, green, and blue channel or the RGB channels. All right, now that we can see what it's doing, let's see how to make this look a little bit better. 
So this is the mask, this is the actual size, and we change this by sliding this either left or right. By default, I have it started at 0.5, which is actually less than the normal unsharpened mask is. It's normally set to one. And you can already see that at one, it's probably a little bit too much. So if I turn this on and off by clicking this little red button up here, you can see how much different it actually looks just by clicking the sharpen tool on. We get a lot more detail, but we're also getting a little bit more grain. And there is a way to reduce that. We'll be reducing it by using this threshold down here and we'll reduce it by using the blend as well. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna turn the size back to the default. And even with the gain turned all the way up, if I start to reduce the threshold, you'll notice that this will start to clear up and so will the background. But I'm gonna do this by holding down Command and Control to make very small adjustments. It might be hard to tell on YouTube with YouTube's compression and whatnot. This has cleared up in the foreground. Now I just have to get rid of some of this in the background as well. And then even if I increase the size a little bit, you'll notice that now I only see the edge that stands out more and I don't see any of the detail in the front. And then now I can just use the blend to blend that edge down a little bit more. So threshold doesn't work like blend, except for if I was to turn it all the way to the right, it would essentially destroy the entire effect and you wouldn't have any sharpening. So lock X, Y, all this is gonna do is it's gonna ungang the X and the Y. By default, I usually leave them ganged together unless the detail that I'm trying to enhance is in either the X or the Y, then I'll go ahead and I'll unlock these. But 99% of the time, I'm gonna leave it locked X and Y. But if you need the option, it is there. All right, so now if we go ahead and we zoom out here, we can see that it's updating in real time and you'll notice that it caches pretty quick. And to be honest, on my computer, I don't even have to have it cached. It'll run almost real time pretty much without any problems whatsoever. The nice thing about this is if I turn it on and off, you can really tell how much of a difference. It almost looks like it's out of focus when I have it off, but then it comes completely into focus when I have it on. And now just imagine how much this is going to increase your workflow by not having to jump over to the color or the fusion tab. All right, let's go ahead and bring in another piece of footage and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna take this video footage of this girl walking in the rain get rid of the media pool and I'm going to bring the effects library and I'm just going to take the sharpen and I'm just going to drop it onto my footage and already you can see that it, how much of a difference it makes where you can really tell the differences if I come over here to where you can see her umbrella come over to the effects here and I'm just going to turn it on and off and wow it almost looks like it, again it's out of focus and then you you turn it on and now you can see all of the nice dots and the ridges on this as well. You can see her hair detail a lot better. Yeah, it's it's quite impressive. And it's really amazing that this wasn't already inside of DaVinci Resolve in the edit page because for the longest time, we would always have to go to Fusion to get this effect. And now we can do it from the edit page, which is really cool. And again, if that's too strong for you, you can always turn it down. And if that's not strong enough, you can always turn it up. Now, I probably wouldn't adjust the size too much. The size, you may want to adjust a little bit. You can go all the way to one. Of course, you can go more. I usually use the size to just show me where the actual edges are. So if I increase the size here and then I increase the gain and the blend all the way up, we can really see where the edges are. You can see there's edges back here. There's edges over here, edges pretty much everywhere. What we don't notice is too much edge into this area over here. And that's because there's no real edge to detect. And so now if I decrease this, we can see how we're bringing the edge quite a bit smaller, but you can also see some of that pixelation that I was talking about. This might be one of those instances where maybe I want to decrease the red channel a little bit, maybe decrease the blue or the green channel, like one of the channels play around and see which channel works best. Generally, again, you're probably just gonna leave all three channels. So now we can go ahead and turn the gain back down and then I can start to blend this in if I think that it's just a little too much because I don't necessarily want this too sharp back here. So let's say that I really want more sharpness in her hair and in here, by turning up the size and the gain, I can see where it's more prominent. It's very prominent right here. You can see there's a real strong edge. You can see that discoloration there. But unfortunately, there's also some back here. So if I want to, I can go ahead and hold down command and control again, and I can start to decrease. You notice that it decreased back here, but I still have a nice edge over on this side. So now I can go back to my original settings. And now I don't have any, almost any of the sharpening back here in the background, which I didn't want, but I still have sharpening up here in the foreground, which is really nice. And let's say I want to gain that up just a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. And I can even... If, if that's not enough gain, if I, I need it to be even darker, I can go ahead and double click in here, maybe type in 10. And now, wow, that really popped really, I didn't even notice that. 
and now I notice it quite a bit. So maybe that's a bit much. Maybe I want to bring it even a little bit more back down. But it's it's very interesting how when you start to bring it back down, it almost looks like things are out of focus now, and that that's how they should have been from the beginning. That's pretty much where we are right now. Um, you'll notice that it works very, very well, but it always has worked. It's always worked really well. You just had to go into the Fusion. So now you don't have to go into the Fusion page. I hope this helped you guys out. I hope you guys get a lot of use out of this tool. I know I'm going to be using it on pretty much all of my videos. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.